These people that think they can run their office simply off of emails and never interact with people, they are missing a huge, huge, uh, something happens when you get around people and stuff rubs off on you that, um, that will just, just bless you. Welcome to Navigation and Discovery with Cameron Singh. On today's episode, we have Mike Robertson on the podcast, and we're going to be talking about the new release of his book, I Can Help You If You Let Me. It's talking about 24 ways to improve your life today. So a little bit about Pastor Mike. Uh, Mike Robertson is global pastor at Visalia First, uh, which is located in Visalia, California. And uh, he's the author of many books, and really he leans on his decades of experience to develop out this book. And you're going to enjoy this conversation that I have with Pastor Mike, uh, 24 Ways to Improve Your Life Today, and really focusing on how to discover your potential and live life to the fullest. So I really hope you enjoy this podcast interview with Mike Robertson. Well, Pastor Mike, thank you so much for uh, being on the podcast. Yes, sir. It's so happy to be here, Cameron. Good to see you again. And yeah, you never age. You never get old. Uh, you neither as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, congratulations on your new book launch. Uh, I can help you if you let me. Uh, for those watching on YouTube, this is the, the book. Um, congratulations. And, you know, Pastor Mike, thank you for writing this message. I've been taking a deep dive into this book over the last week since since getting it and preparing for this interview. Thank you for writing this book. Well, I appreciate that, Cameron. Um, you know, um, have you ever gone through life and you you look at people or people you work with and you think, maybe I could help them? Uh, well, I know I could help them, mm. but will they listen? Uh, so that's how the title of the book came up. I could help you um, because I made a lot of mistakes and I but they have to be willing. The old Chinese saying that when the um, student is ready, the teacher appears. Uh, so uh, that's one of the reasons. And another reason I wrote the book was we uh, we saw, we adopted this teenager girl and came into our house late in my life. And, and I kept trying to teach her all kinds of things, but she wouldn't listen. She was 16, then she was 17, then she was 18, just knew everything. And I wrote this book. I thought, I'm going to write this book because one day when she gets ready to listen, I have written down the key points. And I wrote down about 24 different points I thought would help anybody. And uh, that's how the book came about. Yeah. Yeah. I love the bite-sized points, you know, 24 points. I love writing books like like the book that you wrote on these 24 um, 24 really ways to improve your life as as it is in your title. Um, can you, let's start off the conversation by, you know, what was really your heart behind this book and what is it that you really, why did you want to put the type of message out there? Well, again, uh, Cameron, your, your book will go into places you cannot get. Um, so I, I'm a professional speaker. I guess you could call it that I'm speaking every week somewhere. And, um, I, if I could just get a book in their hands before I leave, they can listen to me to speak for 30 minutes. But if I can go home with them, uh, if I can get into their study, if I can get into their devotional time. And one of the ways I designed this book was that you could read it and you could read each chapter five minutes. Uh, mm-hmm. Start your day off with a with a good thought, five minutes. And uh, and because I, I, I think it's so important how you start your day. And uh, how you develop yourself personally, and how you keep those things going. So, um, yeah, I've um, there's there's hundred. This book just came out, but hundreds have already. I guess thousands are already out there now. But uh, just being able to spend some time with people over a cup of coffee, and I don't even have to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that that's that's uh, amazing. The the power behind a book, and yes. it can go to places where you could never imagine. And um, I love on the back of your book, it says, discover your potential and live life to the fullest. Yes. I would I would say this is very easy to say, but difficult to do. Um, yes. And I, I think people often limit themselves um, to discover their true potential and really what God has called them towards. Um, so what what would you think that is is one big thing that really prevents or limits one? to discover their true potential? 
Well, Cameron, I think everybody is born with a simple sense of helplessness. Uh, when a baby is born, that that baby has no help whatsoever. That baby, if someone doesn't help that baby, that baby won't survive. And I think we all grow up, every single one of us, we grow up in different stages of our lives. We feel helpless. Um, we can succumb to that feeling, and many people have succumbed to it, and they just feel like they're there's no help for them. Maybe they were they were born in not so good of a situation or living in a not so good of a situation or area. But I, I've never succumbed to helplessness. And one of the ways that you uh, uh, don't succumb to helplessness is, is recognize opportunity. Um, I asked a young lady the other day, I said, uh, have you found your opportunity yet? She was working at a sandwich shop and and I go there all the time. And she looked at me like, what are you talking about? I said, opportunity is knocking for every single one of us. The only question is, have you discovered it? She said, no. I said, okay, what can we do this week to get you one step closer to finding opportunity, finding who you can be, finding your potential? And if you can, if you can get out of bed every day and you can say to yourself, I'm going to look for my potential. Uh, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11, everybody knows that boy, boy at first. I know that God said to Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. Uh, okay. If God has some plans, then the second way that I can find out my potential is get in the presence of God. And how do I do that? Well, go into a church service where there's hundreds of worshipers and there's something happens when we get with that many people it's like the presence of God is magnified and or just spend some daily time, five to seven minutes a day, just meditating on God and asking God, hey, God, where what do you want me to do? I promise you, God has a plan. And if you find that plan, buddy, you have, you will be on the beginning steps of discovering your potential, because some of the things you get involved in will scare you. But if you keep on holding the hand of God, he'll develop your potential along the way. Discover and develop, I guess. Yeah, that's one thing that I'm just so amazed is, is I think often people see potential or discovering your potential as something big, right? But it's actually not. If you put it into like small baby steps that you can do to discover your true potential. I mean, I've been in like circles that I felt like I've never belonged in. Like I was telling you before we started recording, went to Aruba for the Sam Chan leadership encounter. 49 other pastors and I was the only business leader and I'm like what am I doing here like why am I here but not yeah. realizing a few weeks later an opportunity has come up and realizing oh that was the reason why I've been involved in this community yep. for the last couple of years it yep. all came together and and you, you being with that many preacher types can be scary if yeah. you're just a business person and but you're a believer but you you have to get in scary situations. You have to get into the deep and learn how to swim. And a lot of people shy away from, a lot of people would have never gone to Aruba <laughs> because yeah. they're afraid of, of being around people of greatness. But the only way that you're going to develop is get around people that are smarter than you and mm -hmm. further down the road. So you did a good thing there, Cameron. You're all the more smarter for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing too, is like seeking that wise wisdom is people that have gone through it and yes. value, valuing other people's journey and getting into other mindsets outside of yours. Because oftentimes if if you yourself uh, keep that to yourself and don't really interact or don't really try to soak in that wise wisdom, you're yes. probably never going to go and discover your true potential or you're probably going to yes. discover something that you are not necessarily called to. Yes, yes. And can I add something to that, Cameron? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, you, uh, the Queen of Sheba, the Queen of Sheba, when she went to Solomon, why did she go over there? She heard there was a smart man in that other country. So she loaded up stuff, brought some gifts. And but when she got there, she was, she was ready with questions. I mm. think that one of the biggest problems that I try to teach the Bible college students, that when you get around greatness, have some questions already formulated. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a friend and he's a single guy who uh, has been to so many countries. He's so stinking smart. He's brilliant. 
and but he's single. He's been single for 40 years. And he's dated, he told me the other day, I have dated hundreds of women. <laughs> and I have yet for one to ask me a question about my travels, a question about my books, question about this. But I think that the Queen of Sheba is a good example for us. When we get around that greatness, we need to be prepared with questions. And once she got all of her questions answered, she looked at the list and said, man, he answered all these questions and he he's answered a lot more. So be prepared when you get around great people and get around that would develop your potential right there by itself. Yeah, that's so true that, you know, that curiosity should never end. It doesn't yeah. matter how old you are. Um, I've, I've seen like John Maxwell uh, is a leadership guru, right? And also a, a man of God. And yep. you see pictures on social media of him after he's done speaking, he's down there taking notes from other leaders yeah. that are speaking yeah. on the stage. And I just can't that get that picture out of my head is like being, having that posture of curiosity, having that posture of learning and being a student. And that, that truly should never end. Yes. You know, one of the, the best jobs, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing right now, I would have loved to have, have had Jerry King's, uh, Larry King's job. Remember Larry King? Yeah. Was on yeah. Television? And he was a master at asking questions. He would never talk about himself. He, he just kept asking questions about the other person. And I feel I'm a similar kind of guy because I'm like you. I'm very curious. Uh, what makes people tick? And how did you do that? Or, hey, Fred, you really messed up your life. Tell me. Tell me how you messed up your life. I want to take some notes on how not to mess up my life so bad. And I promise you, too bad, you know, Jim Rohn said one time, too bad failures don't give seminars. Mm -hmm. um, because if you would listen to failure, you would start thinking some some dash lights would go off on your own dashboard saying, oh, that's how he did it. Oh, that's how you fail. Oh, that's how you mess up your life miserably. You can even learn from failure if you're curious. Just mm -hmm. be a curious person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. Um, I love um, talking about your book, I, I Can Help You. I love how you uh, break out the book into these four sections. Uh, the first one is relationship with yourself, relationship with God, mm -hmm. relationship with others, and relationship with resources. I love how you package that. Um, I wanted to go through uh, some of them. I, now, we don't want to give too much away because, of course, we want to we want people to get a copy of the book. Um, but I'd still like to go through a few of these two, um, on how people can improve their lives today as, as they're listening, uh, to this episode. And the first one I really loved is that model that you presented is shield, which is your personal development plan. Yeah. And I really love diving into this is, is how did you come up with this shield? Oh, I did not come up with S.H.I.E.L.D. I heard an old man say that one time. I I, I can't remember his name, but uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. was um, how you ought to run your life on a daily basis. Uh, uh, you spell the word S.H.I.E.L.D. And the first one is get seven hours of sleep uh, mm -hmm. every day. And I was in a high uh, stress job for years and I was living on three and four hours and it's starting to mess up your brain when you do that. You got to find out how can you get seven hours of sleep. Uh, the second one is when you get with shield is how do you handle stress? How do you handle stress? Uh, you know, I believe in the old adage, uh, how to run your life is by daily diversions, weekly withdrawals, annual abandonments. If you don't have a daily diversion, I went to the grocery store yesterday afternoon and spent about 30 minutes just diverting my stressful life. And it's there's something happens when I go to the grocery store. What is what is it that helps you handle your stress? Go play pickleball or whatever you can. You got to have a stress reliever every single day and have a daily diversion uh, doing that as well. And uh, the I stands for your interaction with other people. You know, these people that think they can run their office simply off of emails and never interact with people, they are missing a huge, huge uh, something happens when you get around people and stuff rubs off on you that um, that will just just bless you. And fourthly, E stands for exercise. Do you exercise, Cameron? You got to do something. Mm -hmm. 
you got to do something. I'm, I've done a lot of things, but I'm down to walking now. But you got to do something two or three times a week to get the old ticker, keep ticking, you know. And uh, so and, and then that the, the learn something new every day. I try to learn something new. That's the L. And then the last one is D. It stands for diet. Um, an old guy was watching me eat one day and I was eating everything wrong and he was a nutritionist and he said, you look like you're probably going to die when you're about 50 years of age. You keep doing that stuff. And uh, he upset me a little bit, but he was right. Uh, Dr. Amen says, uh, you ought to love the foods that love you back. Love the foods that love you back. And that's not French fries. That's not a bunch of cheese. That's not, I love Mexican food, but it's not Mexican food. It's not, you got to figure out a good diet for yourself. So, yeah, that was one of the things in developing your personal development plan. Yeah. Why, why do you think people should even develop out a personal development plan for, for themselves, whether it's shield or developing something? Why do you think it's so important to, to, uh, when we're talking about that relationship with ourselves? Well, uh, if you don't, Cameron, you're going to succumb to, to the sum, the sumness of your thoughts. Uh, if number one, your relationship to yourself, if, I don't know what gets you out of bed in the morning, but negative thoughts get me out of bed because I'll wake up and I'll be just sitting, laying there and thinking this is going to be a good day, talking to the Lord a little bit. Uh, as soon as the negativity starts in, I move out of bed because I break, I divert my attention, I divert my energy away from a negative thought. If you don't, number one, get control of negative thinking in yourself, you will never get out of the box. Um, every day we we wake up, we drive down the freeway. We we got two exits coming up. It's going to be negative town or Blessedville. <laughs> Most of the times, I don't know what it is, but our first thought is negative. You got to not take that off ramp because that's where all the negative people are hanging out and you're going to go down in there and you're going to mess yourself up. And I used to teach young people when I was a youth pastor, every day of your life, you get an elevator, you come in on level five, there's 10 floors. You can punch your buddies that are six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 buddies today, or you can go down in the basement and or punch one or two low level people and they're it'll be good for your soulless realm your flesh will enjoy that but you're not doing anything to help yourself mm -hmm. um and then that's your relationship with yourself then your relationship with god if, if you don't have a, a secret place you don't have a place that you peel away and speak to god uh, god is wanting to talk to us a whole lot more than we think that he is and he'll drop in divine thoughts Cameron, just one divine thought from God will is worth 10,000 thoughts from somebody else. But if you never get in his presence, you're never going to find that. Uh, and then my third section was relationship to others. You know, um, <clears throat> you show me the people that you're hanging around. I'll show you your future. Uh, and where I am today is because of the people that I allowed in my life. I am a result of the relationships that I allow my life. I, I wrote a whole book on that entitled Dealing with Difficult People. Uh, and I think even uh, difficult people, you know, when Jesus uh, looked at Peter and called him the devil, and the next verse he called Judas his friend. Well, Judas betrayed him. You you need a betrayer in your life. Uh, and because God can use that to teach you a whole lot of stuff about yourself. So, um, uh, yeah, I got a lot to say about relationships, but you, you in developing relationships, you've got to have some buddies. I mean, come on, if you don't have a couple of buddies, you're in trouble. Uh, you need some, you need some friends that will, you know, I like what Dr. Sam Chan said, you know, he said, that um, most people, if you ask them what a real good friend is, they will tell you someone to come get me out of jail at two o'clock in the morning. He mm -hmm. said, I got a better version. Someone that can, someone that can celebrate my successes and enjoy my successes. Because a lot of your friends, if you're not careful, they'll be jealous of your successes. Yeah. Uh, find you somebody that can be excited about the things that you're excited about. And that'll be a lifelong friend right there. And uh, yeah. And the last, Last part is uh, you develop your re relationship with resources, and you've got to you've you got to resource yourself, especially in this day and time. Oh, come on, 
if you're not learning, if you're not reading, uh, if you're not going places and exposing yourself to great thinkers, uh, the future, the end is near. Uh, the future doesn't look well. But uh, so that's how the book is broken up. And uh, um, yeah. Um, yeah. I love what you said about relationship with others, because this this was really uh, re referring to Dr. Sam Chand is um, when I went to the Aruba uh, meeting or conference, uh, this is exactly what he talked about. He's like, you will be lucky if you have a couple friends. But because he's experienced it all, and I'm sure you ex experienced this too, Pastor Mike, and I've experienced this too as a young emerging leader is I only have a few friends. And those are the bestest of friends because you're right. A lot of people get jealous when um, they see your success yes. or um, they are around you because they just want that uh, transactional relationship, right? Where they want to use you for something or get, get out of, get something out of you and then like pass you aside. Yep. You're so right. Um, and you got to figure that one out. Uh, mm -hmm. You're a single person. And, and and the most important decision you're ever going to make is is well there's three decisions but number one is are you ever going to give your life to Christ and but number two who are you going to marry if you're supposed to be married that one decision right there will mess more things up in your life than <laughs> so you but but God will help you with that decision God will help you with that decision uh and then your career choice is number three. And if, if if you have if you don't have your best relationship at home that's supporting your career choice, you're you got to trouble some life. So be very careful of who you let close to you, and especially your closest circle needs to be people that celebrate you and not just tolerate you. Yeah. Um something just came to mind about that. I want to take a deeper dive into this is for, for someone listening out there. Uh, especially someone around my age, Pastor Mike, um, you know, a, a lot of people around my age are moving from company to company or church to church and moving in different parts of the country or the world, or whatever that might be. And yeah. I think this is this is the most challenging is when you're in a new place, where do you go and find that community? Yes. Well, um, number one, I would ask you a question. Why are you, why are you changing so many companies or why are you changing so many churches? Because I used to work in the horticultural business and my dad was a landscaper and we planted trees everywhere. And sometimes people would want to uproot those trees and put them in another place too many times. And eventually you just kill the tree because the tree never was able to take roots. You got to you got to be somewhere long enough to where that you set roots down and, and put roots down. But I would say, Cameron, I still I, I'm still favoring the church. I mean, the church is the best place because you're in the presence of the Lord. Those are godly people there trying to find their way as well. Not all of us are perfect. I mean, come on. Uh, uh, someone told me they can't go to church because of all the hypocrites. And I say, well, would I would rather go to heaven with the hypocrites than go to hell with the hypocrites because hypocrites are everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. So just go and it's like eating fish, spit out the bones, find you a good relationship. Come on, get, get in environments. Um, who there's, I used to talk to singles all the time and I would tell them, you know, you stay at home too much. Mm -hmm. And if you never get out and go, it's the law of attraction. If you never go out, how are you? No one's going to know you're available. Um, and then when you do go out, fix yourself up a little bit, you know, don't look like a mattress factory blew up in your house and you just survived it. Come on, get, put, put some, put some smell them on or something and go make yourself presentable. But I don't know if the young people want to hear that nowadays because they're all real and I don't know, um, make your make yourself attractive. And I'm going to tell you one other thing and I'll quit on this. You don't, you don't make yourself attractive by your looks. You, you make yourself attractive by the person you become. Mm. If you're not becoming uh, uh, an interesting person on the inside, you're not becoming a person that uh, is developing or learning something new. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what makes you attractive is develop developing who you are. Yeah, I think that's so important is uh, like creating that personal development plan, but also pursuing personal growth. And that could be however you see that, whether it's listening to podcasts, 
uh, reading books such as yours um, and um, just getting into, you know, what is it that I can learn and, and never losing, like I said earlier, is being that student. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Go out and take a course in something at the college that you don't have to get a degree. Mm -hmm. Just go learn. Go look at the list and see what classes are offering. And, oh, I've always wanted to learn how to paint with my toes or whatever interests you, you know. <laughs> go take a class or something. A lot of smart people out there teaching stuff today. Yeah, for sure. Um, the next one I wanted to go through, uh, Pastor Mike, is uh, living by a divine design. I, I just love this term, divine design. Um Let's start off by what does divine design mean? Well, um, again, Jeremiah 29, 11, God's plan for your life. Uh, he, he told Jeremiah, I knew you before you were in your mother's room, and I mapped out your divine design right there. Uh, the, um, the Greeks had a word, they, they, they used the word telelesis, and that's uh, the word that uh, you can either do, you can either plan your life by default or you can plan your life by design. So number one, God has a design. This, we're designer made. Let's go back, number one, to the designer. What, what are your plans for me? Number two, let me um, uh, figure out, get around some smart people, get around some educated people or whatever, or mentor somebody that can uh, help you develop your design. Uh, uh, keep we keep talking about Sam Chan because he's a friend of mine and yours and John Maxwell and people like that they just they have plans they can help you with their plans and reading their books uh, someone told me the other day that, uh, that that they couldn't buy that book because it's so expensive uh, it was like 50 bucks I'm saying you're going to get that guy's entire life in that book for 50 bucks and he is very successful. Man, 50 bucks is a pretty cheap price to pay to get a plan for your life. So learn number one from God, but learn from others how they've done it, because we can learn a whole lot just by watching successful people. Oh, yeah, that's so true. And um, yeah, like uh, I picked up this book the other day, someone that wrote a biography of Elon Musk. And yeah, that was a $40 book. But the things that you're learning from a person's mindset uh, yes. aside from what's in the media, but like really honing in on mindset, things that you could take on and learn from his life, his, yeah. his ideals, why he's doing all the stuff that he's doing. And um, exactly. you never, you never know what will, you'll be able to learn, even though you'll never be able to meet that person, mm -hmm. but you can take a deep dive into their life and and learn something. Yep. You know, people are always saying, Cameron, I, I need a mentor. I need a mentor. I need a mentor. Well, I I could never get them to talk to me when I was younger. Uh, mm -hmm. So what, what I do, I bought their CD. I bought their uh, books. I watched their podcast. Uh, uh, so if you can't get around somebody, uh, you can definitely adopt them through some type of other means. Mm hmm. Yep. Um, one of the things I then the next one that I wanted to go through is uh, becoming an interesting person. And yeah. I, I just love how you wrote uh, about this is becoming an interesting person. Why is it so important to to become an interesting person? Cameron, I, a, a lot of people are just uninteresting people. And what makes you a very in, uninterested person is when I'm having a conversation with you and all you can talk about is yourself, uh, those are some of the most difficult conversations to have because it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, and oh, how great I was. And <laughs> and uh, I feel like we need to sing a song, How Great Thou Art, you know, after you finish having a conversation with me. But um, And then those people that you talk to and and you're telling them something great that happened in your life, and they've got to one up you. They, oh, that reminds me of the time that this happened to me, and and you weren't listening to my story. You're just wanting me to shut up so you could tell your story. So the problem is, what's not making this conversation interesting is that all we're interested in is you. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you can. If you can be more interested in the other person than you are yourself, I can be having a conversation, Cameron, 
and someone's talking to me and before they finish their conversation, I can have three or four things I can say because I've lived so long, you know, I could say a bunch of things, but I bite my tongue a lot of times and I say nothing because I'm thinking of another question. How can I ask a better question? Oh man, that's interesting what you just said. Tell me a little bit more, unpack that for me a little bit. That means I was listening. You become an interesting person become by becoming a better listener. And then you become a better listener by asking better questions. So keep developing questions, just like the Queen of Sheba. She came with her developed questions and she got them all answered and a whole lot more. And who, where are the people that will just ask the questions? And that makes for an interesting conversation, interesting person. Yeah. Yeah, that is so true because oftentimes, how, I mean, I'm sure you can name different scenarios where people are the first to speak and last to listen. And I love how Craig Rochelle, in one of his podcasts or sermons, he said, you know, you want to be uh, slow to speak, uh, but keep your two ears open and uh, be lis listen first. And I think that's what a lot of people forget nowadays is, is learning to listen and and ask those questions and even like group settings uh there was another podcast i was listening to the other day is like be the last to speak in a group setting be you the last to speak last last to speak because that's how you become more of an interesting person because yes. then people want to know uh your story and more yeah. about you. yeah yes and you've heard everybody else's story and mm -hmm. Uh, I've learned that in a staff meeting. I'll start out as a leader of a staff meeting, go around the whole room and I'll be the last to speak. I've gained all this wisdom by listening for the last 30 minutes to everybody else's ideas, but you got to listen. You got to mm -hmm. listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And it, it could be applied in leadership, could be applied to just the day-to-day -day, uh, personal interactions that you have. Do you feel like that um, this bugs me a little bit uh, Cameron, when I'm talking to somebody and they, they keep looking at their phone or le keep looking at their watch because it's, it's buzzing, it beeps them and it, and they'll, they'll, yeah. Am I not interesting enough that you can't ter turn that thing off? And yeah. because I, what I'll do is, okay, whenever you're finished, I can continue my conversation with you, but I'm, we're too distracted as well. And, and, and oh, a lot yeah. of times I think God is even trying to speak to us, but there's so many distractions. Mm -hmm. It's about the time God gets ready to speak. We, we, we're going to, the enemy of your soul is going to make sure you're distracted. So be, be very aware of the distractions in your life. Yeah. And uh, technology is a big one. Um, like I'm sure you've been in different situations, Pastor Mike, when you meet someone with coffee or lunch, what is the first thing that lands on the table? in front of a person it's the, the phone. phone the phone yeah and uh i forget who said this i think simon sinek i he's like once the phone goes on the table you are giving the other person the signal that my phone is more important than you uh i like that i like yeah. that yeah so i've, yeah. I've always been intentional is when you're meeting with someone do not disturb or turn it off and the phone stays in the pocket the entire time yeah. Good advice. Somebody needs to hear that today. Good yeah. advice. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Um, one of the last ones I wanted to, I didn't have this in our notes, but I really like this one is let go of what's in your hand. Yes. Yes. This, this one is a good one. Do you want to unpack this one a little bit? Well, I don't know. Ex can't remember exactly what I put in the book about it, but that's sort of a lifelong thing, you know, for me, if yeah, I cannot get I cannot grab hold of something new until I let go of something that's been in my life. Every year of my life, I've, I've tried to cut out 20% that doesn't work that I did last year. And if I don't do that, I don't have room for something new. So you've got to let go of some things in your life. Um, I, I love generosity, Cameron, but um, the hardest people to pastor in the church are people that have never learned the, the to be generous um, because I've learned this principle so many years ago that once something leaves my hand, it doesn't leave my life. It goes into my future somewhere and it blesses me in my future. So if I let go of even my money, even my time, if I can just be a generous person and let go 
and and be very generous with your relationships. Uh, if you know somebody that might could help somebody, uh, make the connection. Uh, I just I constantly give something away every day and let it go. Just and that's not even gotten. We've not even gotten into the area of resentments and bitter bitterness and and difficult people. You got to let that go too. Uh, I learned a long time. I'm not giving anybody the power that's in my life. I'm not going to give you the power by being angry. I'm not going to give you the power by hating you. I'm not going to give you the power by whatever means. I just refuse to give you the power of my life. Mm-hmm. I will be in charge of that. And um, so we could go all day about letting things go. I mean, yeah, I think the one of the big things that I've been go, so gracious of is just uh, such a platform like this and, and podcasts like yourself is giving the time. And that's something that's so meaningful for me um, with, with everything I do on a day to day is people giving me time, but not just taking time, but like giving time to others and passing that forward. Um, because, you know, people have been so gracious like yourself to give time and time is is even more so so valuable especially in today's busy world as we call it in society but like just giving that time to someone else you never yeah. know what impact you could make just by giving someone 30 minutes or an hour of your time good word i like that cameron i couldn't have said it better i like yeah. it so as we uh as we come to uh, wrap up a little bit what is really that you hope readers get out of this book well cameron just just you said you went to Aruba the other day. Yeah. I'm sure you came away with one or two takeaways oh, you yeah. came with a couple ideas. Yep. And if someone just looks at the book and they come away with two or three takeaways, you know, uh, one chapter I wrote about uh, the power of your tongue. You mm. got to, if you, if you fix your tongue, you can, if you fix your faith, if you fix your money, you fix whatever area is lacking in your life. If you just walk away with one or two takeaways, say, I've never thought about that. That's going to help me. That 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 would be success. That would be success. Awesome. And for those uh, that are listening or watching on YouTube, uh, you're going to find the link to purchase uh, Pastor Mike's new book. Um, if I I can help you if you let me. And you can find that in the link in the podcast description on whichever platform you're listening on or also on YouTube in the description as well. Um, Pastor Mike, as we kind of come to a close, I do have some rapid fire questions. All right. So, fun All questions, right. Just so our listeners can get to know you more. I, I like learning more about uh, leaders in the church and leaders that come on to this podcast. So the first one is, uh, what is it that you do to consume content and continually grow and develop yourself? Every day I learn something new, Cameron. Um, I'm, I read 12, 15 books a year. Um, wow. Always listen to podcasts. Um, I I just don't stop learning. Uh, I'm, I'm an older guy, and I just, I, I enrolled in my eighth university the other day, I'm working on a master's degree in finance. Just wow. because I love numbers, I just wanted to go more, learn more. Ever, ever since I got born again, I've never stopped learning and don't stop learning every single day of your life. Awesome. Um, what is one podcast and one book that you would recommend to our listeners that you consume? Um, well, I recently read a book, uh, The Spectrum of Legacies, uh, by Weber, a fellow by the name Weber, and um, it it talks to people about how to work on their legacy piece, uh, where we're going to be in the future. Um, your inheritance is is money that you leave behind for your kids, uh, but your legacy is who you leave behind. Who, the who of you. Um, it's not what you did, it's the who. And um, so Spectrum of Legacies has is, is been one of my one of my great reads uh, recently. And um, uh, of course, uh, sounds like this is a Sam Chan podcast, but uh, anything that Sam Chan writes, I read. Uh, oh, yeah. Because I'm a leadership developer and I'm a leadership consultant. And anything that, that fellas, whatever he's smoking, I'm buying. <laughs> oh yeah same here 
Um, dead or alive, who would you like to have lunch with? My dad. Mm. Uh, my dad died when I was 17. I never got to know him in my adult life. And as I was a 17 year old knucklehead and he was a very hard man, but I've longed to have a meal with him. I've longed to sit down and just, just talk to dad, you know, uh, it'd be my dad. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Uh, what is the next thing that you would like to do on your bucket list? I want to go to St. Petersburg, Russia, and I want to go to the Hermit. Am I saying it right? Hermit Museum. Mm. I love Rembrandt's paintings, and he has a painting there that must be eight foot tall, seven foot wide on the prodigal son. And that is another interesting book I've read is The Return of the Prodigal, a whole book written on that uh, painting of Rembrandt's. And man, I love, love The Return of the Prodigal. Uh, that, and I'd love to go to Russia to see that uh, painting. Awesome. And then final question is, what is the best advice or words of wisdom that you have received so far? I was going through a difficult time years ago and an old man came up to me and put his arm around me in church. And he said, this too will pass. Mm. And I don't know. I, I don't think I'd ever heard that before. It's, uh, but I've been in a lot of difficult situations as you have Cameron. And uh, I keep telling myself this too will pass. Mm. It'll be a brighter day tomorrow. Um, and God is on our side. And if God is on your side, who can be against you? You know, uh, this too will pass. Whatever you're going through, it's going to pass. Just get your eyes up, look up into the hills. Whence comes your help, the psalmist says. Your help comes from the Lord. He created the heavens. He created the earth. He created you. He knows exactly what to do with you. Well, awesome. I think this is a great spot to close. Pastor Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the podcast. Um, really appreciate your time in, and thank you for writing this book. Well, thank you, Cameron. If anybody wants the book, it's I Can Help You If You Let Me. I also have a website by that title, I Can Help You If You Let Me. And because um, at this stage of my life, I just want to help people. Uh, and thank you for this podcast. Thank you for what you do, Cameron. You're blessing a lot of people. Uh, You're good. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, for those that are, want to get a copy of this book, by Pastor Mike. You got to get it in your hands and the links are in the description on whichever platform we're listening on. So thank you, Mike, Pastor Mike. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you again. Well, I hope you enjoyed this podcast interview with Mike Robertson. If you're interested in getting a copy of his book, I Can Help You If You Let Me, 24 Ways to Improve Your Life Today, you can go on Amazon today. Uh, the link is in the podcast description on whichever platform you're listening on and get your copy. Um, it's a great quick read and you're going to enjoy uh, learning more about some of the topics that we touched on in today's podcast interview. If this is your first time tuning in to Navigation and Discovery with Cameron Singh, feel free to click the subscribe button on whichever platform you're listening on so that when the next episode goes live and future episodes goes live, you'll get a notification. And also, feel free to go back and take a look at some of the other guests that I've had on this year, this past year, and years uh, last year. Um, some awesome guests over since the launch of this podcast and i think it's been a little bit over a year now so feel free to go and check that out we're now at episode 50 of the podcast which is awesome um also if you haven't gotten your copy yet of my first book navigation and discovery a path of navigating and discovering through your journey of faith it's a little glimpse of my story and i uh, hope you get your copy today cameronsing.com you can go on my website there CameronSing.com. Check out the book. Uh, if you already have gotten the book and enjoyed it, maybe think about gifting a copy. Uh, you can also donate on the website, donate, donating to spread the message of navigation and discovery um, to cover, help cover costs with um, publishing the book, the next book, maintaining the podcast production. That would be very, very helpful if you can help uh, contribute to this message 
Thank you so much for tuning in to Navigation and Discovery with Cameron Singh. Again, feel free if you want to connect with me, CameronSingh.com. Uh, go there. You can follow me on social media, send me an email, and I uh, would be happy to connect. And uh, thank you again, and we'll catch you next week on the next episode.